In this video, I want to explain the connection between exchangeability and the assumption that a sequence of random variables are independent and identically distributed, which is abbreviated as IID. Okay, and what we're going to see here is that being IID does in fact imply that a sequence of random variables are what we call exchangeable. Whereas the contrast, which is that if we have a sequence of random quantities and they are exchangeable, this does not necessarily imply that the same sequence is independent and identically distributed. Okay, so let's think about an example of this first issue here or this first statement here. So let's imagine the situation where we are flipping a coin and as we sort of normally suggest that if the coin comes up heads, it takes on a value of one. And if it comes up tails, then it takes on a value of zero. In this circumstance, we can reason that the flips of the coin are in fact IID, which means that because they are independent and identically distributed, then what we can do is we can start off with the case whereby I flipped the coin and it came up heads the first, the second time, and then it came up tails for the next three times. We know that the joint probability of this outcome is exactly the same thing, or exactly the same value rather, as the probability of it first coming up tails, then it coming up heads, then it coming up tails, then it coming up heads, and then finally it coming up tails. So here we've sort of reasoned that in this circumstance, with the flips of the coin being reasonably assumed to be IID, they're independent because if I flip the coin and it comes up heads and I do it in a sort of a fair manner, that shouldn't affect the probability that it comes up heads on the second flip. And they're identically distributed because I'm assuming that I'm doing it in exactly the same manner each time I flip the coin. So that you, we can sort of reason that the flips of the coin are IID. And we've sort of seen that this leads to our sequence of random quantities actually being exchangeable. But can we think of an example whereby our random variables are exchangeable, but that doesn't imply that they are IID? Well, there is quite a famous example of this, which is, no, which is known as Hollier's urn. So as the name would suggest here, what we have is we have some sort of urn. So let's imagine we have some sort of box or some sort of pot rather. And within that pot, there are a number of white and black balls. So let's imagine that there are in our sort of fictitious example, one black or sorry, two black and three white. So I'm just going to sort of randomly distribute these things without, within our sort of urn here. And what we're imagining is we're imagining that we are taking out these balls at random from our urn and we're recording the values on them. And what we're going to say is we're going to say if the value or if the color of the ball is black, then we're going to assign a value of one. And if it's white, we're going to assign a value of zero. Okay, so let's think about what would be the probability that we draw two black balls out and then the remaining three balls that we draw out are white. So in that circumstance, what we're saying is we're saying, what's the probability that we would get a one, a one, then three zeros? Because we're drawing out two black and then three whites thereafter. So what's the corresponding probability here? Well, the probability that we get a black when we draw out the first ball, and bear in mind, we're not actually, I probably haven't said this, we're not replacing the balls here. So in the first ball which you draw out, the probability of it being black is two fifths. For the next ball, the probability of it being black is one quarter. And then well, we've drawn out the two black balls, so the remaining three balls are all white, so they all just contribute a one to the probability. So you can do the sum here quite easily and you get a value of two twentieths or a bit simpler, one tenth. Okay, so that's one particular order of getting two black balls out in our sort of five uh, sequence of five draws. Let's imagine another sequence. So let's imagine now that the probability of first we draw out a white ball, then we draw out a black ball, and then we draw out two white balls, and then finally a black ball. Okay, so for the first white ball, the probability is three fifths because there are three whites to begin with. Then for the next ball, the probability that we actually get a black now is, well, there are only two black and there are four balls left, so it's two fourths or a half. Then the next ball probability that we get a white there is going to be two thirds because there are two white and three balls left. And then we get a half for the next probability and then there's just one ball left 
for the last one, which is black, and so that contributes our probability of one. Then what we can do is we can go through and we can start cancelling the top and bottom of each of these expressions. So the three here cancels with the three down here, and the, let's say, the two here uh, cancels actually with the two down here. So what we're actually going to find here is that we're going to get, again, 2 twentieths, which is exactly the same thing as 1 tenth. And it's very easy to show that for Polya's urn, that any combination of the same number of white and black balls is equally likely. And that's just essentially saying that the sequence of random variables are themselves exchangeable. But are these sequence of random quantities, are they IID? Well, they're obviously not because they're not independent here because the probability of drawing out a second uh, black ball, given that we've drawn out a white ball, depends on the outcome of what ball we draw out in the first place. So it depends on whether it is in fact white or black. So the data very much is not independent. So we have thought about an example here, and it's a sort of famous example here, whereby even though we have exchangeable data, the data is not independent and hence is not IID. Okay, so that's a discrete example. Can we think about a corresponding continuous example? Well, the example you can actually think about here is the case of a Gaussian 2D distribution. So the probability density here, P of X and Y, is proportional to the exponent of something like uh, minus 1 over 1 minus rho squared times, open bracket, X squared, you can actually see that, plus Y squared minus 2xy row, close brackets, and I've just remembered that there should be a 2 on the bottom here as well. And here, you can actually see that you could change x and y, the order of these two things, and you could put y's value into x and x's into y, and it wouldn't affect the value which you would get out for your uh, PDF here. But unless rho is actually equal to 0, we know that the data aren't independent. It's only when rho is equal to zero is there no correlation between x and y. So again, we've got an example of a sort of data process which is in theory exchangeable, but not necessarily independent.